Hey, what's happening guys? Today we are going to take a look at this little breakout board from Adafruit for the Silicon Labs SI5351 chip. This is a three output clock generator and it can give you um, an output from 2.5 kilohertz to 200 megahertz. Pretty cool little device here. Now these headers here are for an SMA connector you can solder on. But if you're using it in circuit, you see that one there says clock zero. There's zero, one, and two. So you can just get them off of a header and use it on your breadboard. And of course there is SCL and SDA. So that means it's I squared C. And then we have ground and power. And since this is a nice Adafruit product, you know it's going to have not only a voltage regulator, but also some level converters. Because this is a 3.3 volt logic chip. But with the level converters, you can use it with your Arduino and 5 volts at no trouble whatsoever. So let's move that out of the way for a minute. And I'm going to bring in... Just this one page from the data sheet. So again, this is from Silicon Labs, and you can see it generates up to eight non-instrument related frequencies from 2.5 to 200 megahertz, I squared C, exact frequency synthesis, zero PPM error, highly linear voltage controlled oscillator, has an optional clock input, low output jitter, configurable, sp configurable Spread spectrum selectable. So it is really nice. And you can see the core needs 2.5 to 3.3 volts. But with the uh, the Adafruit level shifters and the uh, voltage regulators, it's all good. So you can see some of the applications for it here. And one here, very important, a crystal replacement. That's what I'm going to be using this for in a future video with the bit x40 radio build but we'll get to that later i'm going to put some sample code on this chip and we'll take a look at it so let's uh take a look at the sample code first okay here is a the, the example code we're using it uses two libraries wire that's your i squared c and the adafruit si5351 and I will put a link to that library down below. Now here's what we're going to call the library. SI5351 Clock Gen Adafruit SI5351. Then down here in our setup section, we're going to make sure it's working. So we say, if clock begin, not equal error, <laughs> then it's going to work and it'll print out OK otherwise you're going to get an error message up here alright okay <clears throat> so we're going to set our clock gen 0 to integer only mode we're going to set up our phase lock loop A to integer only mode at 900 megahertz and you can see it has to be between 600 and 900 megahertz. So to get your output frequency, in this case, 112.5 megahertz, we have to use the divide by 4, 6, or 8. So we have our 20 meg 25 megahertz crystal times 36, which equals our 900 megahertz. And then we divide our 900 megahertz by 8, and that gives us our output of 112.5 and right here you can see the commands clock gen setup PLLI PLL integer SI5351 PLLA to 36 that sets it up and then we're going to control the multi synth so clock gen dot setup multi synth in integer mode which output is it it's output 0 which phase lock loop are we using? A. 
and then what are we going to divide it by? 8. And that will give us our 112.5 megahertz. Now we also have fractional mode, but it does give you a little bit of jitter. Not much, but some. So we're going to set our phase lock loop B to 616.6667 megahertz. And we'll set our multi synth up to 13.5 megahertz. And that's just our phase lock loop B divided by 45.5. So we do our clock gen setup PLL, SI5351 PLLB, 24 divided by 2 and 3. Then we'll set up our multi synth output to number 1, PLLB, and it's divided by 45. Relatively simple, but it does require a little math. Then we also have our output number 2, which is just set to an integer mode, 10.706 kilohertz. And you can see the commands are the same as we did in uh, our output 0. And our clock gen enable outputs true. That turns it on. And you can put clock gen enable outputs false, and that will turn it off. All right, let's go uh, take a look at it in action. Okay, here's our demo setup. We're using the Nano as the driver, and there's our SI5351. SCL goes to A5, SDA goes to A4, then we have power out. That goes to V in right here, and ground goes to our ground. Now we have our three clock outputs right here, 0, 1, and 2, and a ground to hook them up to. So let's start with the first one. Always hook up your ground first. And then we'll connect this probe to output zero. And we'll take a look at it on the scope. Okay, here it is on the smelloscope. And you can see we do have some jitter. I think a lot of that has to do more with the uh, low bandwidth. This is a 50 megahertz scope, 500 mega samples per second. But here you can see we are getting uh, 112.499, so 112.5 megahertz. So that's, you know, that's over twice what this scope is supposed to be able to handle. Let me stop. We'll stop that there, and we'll bring in some cursors. We'll go to uh, manual. And we want voltage. Let's get a cursor A. We should be looking around 3 volts peak to peak. And then cursor B. Oh. Cursor B. Got to hit the right button, Paul. Huh. Okay. We're only getting 84 millivolts here, and the reason for that is we are greater than the 3 dB, so we're getting some attenuation there on the signal. Again, that's a function of the scope, not a function of the uh, generator. All right, turn this on, back on here, and we'll turn our cursors off. And then we'll go down here. And look at our next output, output number one. We'll come back to the scope. And we'll check it out here. Okay, now there you can see we're getting uh, 
2.8 volt peak. That's not right. The AC couple that guy. Set our trigger at 50%. There's our 13.55 megahertz. And if we say measure, voltage, peak to peak. Oops. Okay, there we go. We're getting 2.9, 2.98. Since that is under our limit for the scope, so we're getting the full output. So three volts peak to peak. And let's take a look at the last one, which is quite low at about 10 kilohertz. There you go. Come on. Play nice. All right. So we'll bring this in. Set our trigger to 50%. And you see we're getting 10.7 kilohertz at 3.3 volts peak to peak. And you can see it is outputting beautiful square waves. Again, the ugliness there was more feature of the scope than the clock gen. So this is a very, very nice chip very nice breakout board and it has a lot of uses we're going to be using it in an upcoming radio build and uh, i think you guys will enjoy that you know i i became a ham radio operator february 17th of this year so just a little over a month and i'm having a lot of fun with it but there are barriers to entry in this hobby like any other and the main barrier to entry is price the stuff is expensive a probably the cheapest high frequency transceiver you can get is by a company called Alinko and it is their uh, DX8 it's about five hundred and seventy nine dollars the big three Kenwood Yesu and Icom uh, let's see the Icom 718 is around seven hundred dollars and the Yesu 450 is around $800. And they only go up from there. But this radio, and I'll put a link to it down below, it's called the Micro Bit X. It is a high frequency radio, has nominal 10 watts output, which isn't much, but what it does have is a separate voltage input for the power amp section. And the uh, MOSFET that it uses can take up to 100 volts. DC. Now we're not going to put 100 volts in it, but I think we're going to put about 24 volts in it instead of the standard 12. That'll boost us up to 20 watts, which is a respectable amount. So that'll be coming in the future. I just ordered the radio last week from India. It's made by a guy named Ashar Farhan. And uh, the price on that is $59. Now, the barrier to entry into high frequency communications is dropped with something like that. But it, is, it takes a little DIY. That's all right. We can handle that. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to the patrons and a big thanks to you for watching this. That's it. I'm out. Peace.